Okay, so I hope everybody's enjoying their time off. This is Chad. I'm here to give you a report on some of the work I've been doing this past few weeks. Um, one thing I discovered that's pretty useful is this application called No Machine. What No Machine allows you to do is you can remotely connect to the Jetson TK1 and use a remote desktop-like environment. And it allows you to interact with the Jetson as if it was connected to a monitor. So the only requirement is that you have a compatible machine that can run No Machine, which includes OS X, Linux, and Windows. Um, there is an ARM version of No Machine that's able to run on the Jetson TK1. And I'll be using that today to provide the demo of the research portion. So without further ado, get into that. So the first step we're going to do is um, just open up No Machine here. And then if we hit continue, it'll give us a list of computers that's detected on the network that are running No Machine as well. We'll select this one. This is going to connect us to the Jetson TK1. Okay, and so we'll enter the default password, which is just Ubuntu, and we'll see that this is some of the previous windows that were open during the demo video that we'll see here shortly. This just shows the results of that demo video in our viz. And again, this is running directly on the Jetson TK1. There's a little lag, and that's because it's running in remote desktop. But as far as usability, it's fairly robust and it allows you know, rather easy manipulation of all the controls. So it's not perfect. You know, there's one example where the mouse kind of gets away from you. You don't have the fidelity of control that you would, you know, running with a monitor. But Overall, it makes it easier and more practical for development. So this just kind of demos the No Machine application that's running on the Jetson TK1 and allowing us to do remote desktop directly into it without a monitor or keyboard. So the core of the research um, has been to try to profile this code RTAP map, which is just an RGBD slam application that has a open source pre-built library that's rather easy to manipulate and also it's robust enough to test different um, components as far as the slam algorithms go so to see how all of that works i pre-recorded a demo that shows what led up to what we're seeing on the screen here so i'll go ahead and run that now Okay, so here we're just going to go ahead and set up our workspaces to make it a little easier to keep everything organized. Okay, and of course we have to first source the devil, which just sets up the bash environment so that we can work on it. As you can see from the demo, I had a little, <laughs> some problems typing there, but eventually we'll get there. Okay, so this part is going to actually run a predefined script that's provided in the ROS version of our tab map. And it just sets up the environment. The key thing to note here is when we go back to that window um, in that window which we'll see earlier or we'll see later um, the statistics portion allows us to see the run times of several portions of the code and so this gives us the ability to test what the current runtime was um, 
compared to this test data set that we're running here as opposed to the modified one. So what this does, this window that just exited out of there was the test data set. And the test data set is something that's provided by RTAP map and ROS. And it's just a collection, a raw spec of a simulated session. And so it's going to allow a base model to test against um, when we do modifications for improvement. So here we see the runtimes of several elements of the program. And as you can see, one of the ones that seems to be a bottleneck is signature creation. Signature creation is going to relate to actually extracting the features from the respective images. So the next step may be to try to improve upon this time. We see it rarely runs below 100 milliseconds. Um, this impacts how fast you can run the algorithm. Right now, this pre-recorded algorithm is running at one hertz. Um, for real-time applications, we may want to have something that can maybe process, you know, a 10 or maybe even more hertz to get results, especially with a flying vehicle where the movement can be rather rapid. So the faster we can process images and um, kind of disrupt the motion of blur effects will be beneficial. Right now the goal is to use the Jetson TK's one GPU to provide optimization in the open source RTAP map code by just using um, the available CUDA libraries to paralyze parts of the program that seem to be bottlenecks. So here we're just going to launch and see how it looks in Arvis. And so for this we'll have to go in and we'll have to add the components we want. Right now we're just going to add the grid map this could later be used in a real knife scenario for um, localization. So once we're able to build this map, we're using it in the SLAM to localize ourselves in real time. Um, however, if we have additional robots that may enter the scene at a later time, we can also use this map to localize them. and. In that scenario, the robots wouldn't necessarily need to perform SLAM, they would just need to perform localization, which should allow them to do it easier. And here we're just adding a point cloud, and this just shows some of the depth that's already defined in the map. which in the case of a robot navigating in a 3D space, such as a quadcopter, this could be rather beneficial. Um, because as soon as we have these portions of the map that have been defined to some heuristic where they're good enough to provide additional navigation, then we can dispatch additional robots and aid in the SLAM. So in other words, they would do a cooperative slam at that point and build the map faster and thus be able to complete whatever defined mission they have. So that's the end of that demo running there. And we saw that it's relatively easy to profile the code. One thing I should add, in order to profile the code, I had to do a little bit of a workaround. So we'll go back into the live running machine here. We'll just close all this stuff out. So what I had to do to run the code 
to get the display where you could view the profile and result, I have to go in as a root user, which you can do by doing sudo su, and then typing in the password. And so once you're root, again, you're going to want to source the devil in the workspace, the Kacken workspace. So you'll go into there. Sorry about that. And then we'll just go ahead and source this devil. And so once you're in there, now you can launch all the ROS stuff as you would normally um, without it telling you that the command's not found. Um, so we'll, right now we're going to try to run that same launch again. The difference, you won't be able to see it now because I already saved it, but the difference is if you run this without being in sudo, you don't get the display menu. So I'll show you what I'm talking about there. And it may run. Here we go. Okay, so before when I would run it, this display menu here would file edit detection tools and windows. That was not there. So running it in sudo um, actually does populate it. So for instance, with the statistics, if I go in here and I say default views, and we just go ahead and we wipe out the statistics view here. And then I go in here and I save it. And it will close it. Now, we'll open another terminal. This will be under just a default Ubuntu user. And we'll launch the same thing. That failed because we have this, so let's go ahead and close all this out. Super user, close this out on Ubuntu. Okay, and we still didn't launch. Sometimes it's still a little buggy, sometimes it doesn't launch. Once it runs, it doesn't really crash, but sometimes getting it off the ground. Okay, so as you can see, now we've run into a problem. So now the menu's gone, and we don't have any statistics when you're in. There's no way to access the statistic menu. So that's why we had to come in here. We'll just close without saving there. That's why we had to come into the super user, and now we'll go back and we'll relaunch this as the super user after we close everything. that start back up okay we're there now we have our window we have our menu back so we can go here and we can again say okay we want to see statistics we do that now this time we save it and we'll go ahead and exit out of that and we'll go ahead and make sure everything's closed okay and now we'll relaunch it as a regular user And now we see that the statistics menu is back. So that's how we enable that to run on a user. The reason why you can't just run everything under the super user is the pipes don't work correctly. There's probably a workaround for that, but that's not really my concern. But the issue is, like, for instance, when you want to play some of the test set data, like the raw spec we saw earlier running, um, it doesn't run if you do everything as a super user you have to do it as just a regular user level so that's why that workarounds there um, but other than that everything looks promising I mean um, being able to run the no machine on the Jets and TK1 is really a game changer as far as ease of development um, they have remote development available but I think what I'll end up doing it's just now that I have the no machine is I'll go ahead and get just a regular IDE um, one that I've worked with previously 
We'll see if we can bring it up here. It's code blocks. And it provides a really nice graphic user interface. And pretty easy to work with. And it's available for the TK1. So we could get an ID like this. And then that's going to make it easier to work with. Like for the RTAP map, you have to work with a CMake structure. A CMake structure. Um, and so doing that from the command line can be rather tedious. But doing it in an IDE should make it relatively easy to keep track of things. Um, other than that, that's all I have. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I hope everybody has a great time off and hope to see you all soon. Thanks.